Aloha, everyone. Good to see all of you. Uh, a few faces I haven't seen. Understandably so. And uh, there's uh, also uh, a face on Zoom that we haven't seen for a while, and that's uh, Vicar Sina. So, Sina and May, hello. Aloha from Honolulu to Salem. Okay, this is the second, 20, the 20th Sunday at. Later in the service, we will observe the. Uh, To, uh, uh, pray for you. Uh, I'll direct you to remain standing and uh, we'll. The ring song God, whose almighty word. Because I heard someone here say it favored them. All for those of you at home, sing loudly and. Emily. Please stand as you're able. Thank you, Emily. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us speak and pray the Kyrie together. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Ule Kako, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from Amos chapter five. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsively, half verse by half verse. So teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us. And as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works. And your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. A reading from Hebrews chapter 4. Indeed. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge, judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and lay bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. 
you shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own. Oops, I lost my place. Oh. And give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> I don't think I ever lost my place in the middle of the gospel quite like that. It just all blurred over, which might fit with the sermon. And I'm going to throw in a cakey story, even though I don't usually do it on a uh, Sunday like this. But I'm going to do it anyways, because I think it fits. And some of you will know it. You'll be familiar with it. It's called the Emperor's New Clothes. Once upon a time, there was an emperor in a small kingdom who liked to be called emperor, even though it was a small kingdom, and who liked new clothes. He loved to show off flashy, fancy clothes. He liked to get in his and carriage and have himself pulled around town strutting about in the carriage saying, look at me, look at all my wonderful clothing. He did it so much that he seemed to be neglecting his duties, but no one would tell him that. They knew it, but they were afraid to tell him. One day, two weavers, two scoundrels, came up with an idea. They went to the emperor and they said, we will make you the finest clothing. It is so light that you won't even feel it on your shoulders. It's feel like you're not wearing anything. And only those who are fit to serve you and the kingdom will be able to see the clothes. If they say they can't see it, fire them. Get rid of them. The emperor was just totally enchanted with this idea. So he gave them gold thread and the finest silk. And they began to weave the clothing on looms that he had given to them right there in the castle. And the gold thread and the silk. They stuffed it in their satchels and 
scooted it to the back of the room where no one could see it. They pretended then to keep weaving and sewing. The emperor was so excited, he sent one of his ministers to check on progress. The minister knew that only the fit could see this. He had no problem with that until he got to the room and he looked and said, where's the clothing? And the two scoundrels said, right here. And they held it up, sort of, kind of. And the minister was like, oh, no, I can't see it. But he only said it to himself. Describe it to me some more. It's most impressive, he said. And so they did in great detail. And he, he remembered it all in his head. And he went back to the emperor and he said, how was it? And he said, this is how it looked. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. And the emperor went, great. I'm so excited. Oh. Finally, the day of the parade came and the emperor was so ready to wear this new fine clothing. And the two scoundrelous weavers brought it to him, sort of, kind of, and said, here, what do you think? And he says, it's lovely. As he said to himself, I can't see anything. Am I not fit to be the emperor? I better not say anything. It looks lovely, he said again. I can't wait to put it on. They said, take your clothes off. And he did. And they said, let's put this on. And they, he says, I can barely feel it. And they said, that's because it's so magically light. And he kept looking in the mirror and saying, oh, this is lovely. Oh, how wonderful. Went out to his carriage, got into it, and the driver started with the horse, and down the road they went, that away. Down the road, the weavers went, that away, with all the gold thread and spine silk, never to be heard from again. But the emperor went right through town, and the people had heard about all this wonderful clothing that the emperor was going to be wearing that day, gathered by the dozens in the streets. And as he went by, they all fell silent, strangely silent. The emperor thought, that's odd, but kept going. In the silence, one tiny little voice from a small child said, but mommy, the emperor has no clothes on. And when he said that, the people began to laugh and cover their eyes and say, he has no clothes. The emperor has no clothes. And I don't know about the people but I'm pretty sure that the emperor did not live joyfully ever after. Man, I had to work that one in somehow. That was tough, I tell you. Whoa, seeing, hearing a small voice, speaking, listening, taking it all in with your eyes, it's intimately bound together. Let's take the speaking language first. Wow, in these last two years, we've all learned a new language, haven't we? Lots of new words. I made a list of them. I don't know if you can see that online, but look at that, two columns, almost a full page. Words like coronavirus, COVID-19, positivity rate, rapid test, ooh, nasal swab. PCR, shutdown, surge, masking, KN95, N95, non-surgical mask, social distancing, the before times, BC, before COVID-19, 
Oh, you haven't heard that one? Yeah, yeah, we, we were actually BC before COVID. The jab, the poke, the boost. Did you get Pfizer or Moderna? And if it's been two weeks since you got your last Moderna, does that make you a post Modernaist? I knew, I knew you would get that. You don't even go to J and J. Fauci. That's the one name I remember. FDA approved. Restrictions. Tears. What tier are we in? Mutations leading to variants. And then all that Greek. Alpha, beta, kappa, iota. Wait. Lambda. Mu, Delta, I, I learned Greek. I had Greek minor in college and I can barely remember the alphabet except Delta, Lambda and Mu. Anti-vaxxers, mandate, social disinformation. And a few oldies but goodies from the years before, QAnon, fake news, the big lie. We have learned a new language, haven't we? And whenever we learn a new language, the world changes. The world changes. When I did learn Greek, the way I read the Bible changed because it was written in ancient Greek. And I could understand and appreciate things that I couldn't before. When I went to live in Germany to study German, it took me about a month, but suddenly I started dreaming in German. I started thinking, in, I didn't have to translate it in my head to English and then think of an English response and then put it back into German. I could do it all in German. Especially that time, well, except for that time, I ordered a cesarean section in a restaurant. That was a little awkward. I wasn't, I was a little skinnier than I was then too, so. But the Germans next to me thought it was so funny that they bought me beer all afternoon and wanted to know why the, uh, an American was trying to speak German when they all knew English. I, somehow I got home to the hotel that night. <laughs> when we learn a new language, our world changes. There is a new game on, a new language game, a new way of seeing the world in our language, seeing the world, finding our way about, coping, speaking, chattering, conversing. A couple days ago on the radio in the news, I half heard this thing, this, this, this one news item where it said, Aladdin, the musical, is coming back to Broadway in the next couple of weeks. And they were interviewing one of the actresses and she said, and this is what struck me, COVID-19 isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So we've got to figure this out. And that hit me, wow, COVID-19 isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So we have got to figure this out. It is here to stay, and so is the language. What we speak is what we see, or don't want to see. Speaking and seeing are closely connected. An email came to me the other, oh, about a month or so ago now from the retiring president of Auburn Seminary in New York City. And what she spoke on paper or on the screen in the email was a visual for me. She said this, the coronavirus hasn't made life any worse. Not any worse. What? No, she said. It has just pulled back the curtain, showing us what has been there all along. And then she proceeded to enumerate all of the inequities and inequalities that have been exposed 
by having the curtain pulled back. And all I could think of was how the curtain in the temple in Jerusalem as Jesus was dying on the cross was torn in two to reveal the holy of holies. And I thought to myself, we can see clearly the idols that we have worshipped in our own holy of holies, our own culture, our own politics, our own religion, our own economics. We can see now what we could not see before. I like to say, like the prophets, like Jesus, like the pandemic, we have had rendered visible now that which has been familiar all along. We have rendered visible that which has been familiar all along. What we can see right in front of our two eyes, but which we could not see or register, and it's now clearly recognizable. The curtain is torn in two, it is pulled back, and the emperor has no clothes. Rendering visible what is familiar is kind of hard to grasp. What do you mean? If it's right there, why can't we see it? Let me tell you, sometimes people walking in here, if, we've, if we've, you've come enough times, you don't notice where the welcome mat is. Is it inside or is it outside? You don't notice if the, the rolling table is in or out or what, or what about, what about the school stuff or where? What about your car keys? Anybody ever lose your car keys in the house and say, where did they go? Huh? There's people pointing fingers over here, but the rest of you are nodding heads. Yes, okay. And you know, you'll go and look where they're supposed to be five times and they're not there. And then you go and look in your fallback places. And then you go and look where you can't imagine them to be. And then you finally, in frustration, give up and stop looking. And when you stop looking, stop talking, speaking to yourself about where did they go, there they are. And quite often, they're in the place you looked in five times, right? You're looking for the familiar, and you can't find it until you stop. Until you stop speaking, until you stop seeing, and they pop up. More seriously, in this last month or so, the tragic disappearance and death of Gabby Petito the young, pretty, white girl who was what, on a cross-country camping trip with her boyfriend created a social media frenzy. And then following that frenzy came another response saying, wait, what about all of the Native American and Alaska Native women who have disappeared, who never got mentioned like this in the news? And then here in Hawaii, people said, let's not just talk about American, Na Native Americans and Alaskan Natives. What about the Native Hawaiians and the Pacific Islander women? So we had wait, wait, wait upon, we rendered visible the familiar over and over again. And perhaps since tomorrow, is not only Discoverer's Day, but is also National Coming Out Day, LGBTQ. Perhaps we could hie ourselves back to October 6, 1998, to Laramie, Wyoming, where a young gay white man who had just tested positive for HIV was kidnapped, beaten, tortured, and left to die on a barbed wire fence. And he died six days later in a hospital. And after that frenzy of media attention, people began to say, what about the gay black man who was murdered in Texas by a rope pulled behind a truck? 
dragged through town till he was dead. What about the four or five transgender women of color in New York City who were murdered that week? And we had rendered visible that which had been familiar, but which we could not see. Brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ, like Amos's calling in our reading this morning, like most prophets, like Jesus himself, our calling, our baptismal calling, is to render visible that which is familiar, but which we do not like to see. Our baptismal calling is to call out sin and death and evil wherever we see it, to help others recognize injustice, inequality, and even incivility that is sitting right in front of us. We are called to say the emperor has no clothes. It's not easy. That's what Hebrews is saying. It's not easy. Like Amos, we may get run out of town. Like Jesus, we may get crucified. People don't like to look at what's right in front of them sometimes. It, they can get violent about it. They won't, don't want to acknowledge what is staring them in the face. It might force them to learn new words, a new language game. It might force them to put on a new mind, that is, see things differently, which in Greek means to repent. Kind of like Jesus telling the rich man, go sell everything, give it to the poor and follow me. And then he says, it is hard, hard for the rich to get into the kingdom of God because so much gets in the way. And so, and so, it's sort of like getting a vaccination. In a way, a vaccination is a confession, an act of repentance. It is saying that our emperor has no clothes. There is no justice in the gate. The gate was city hall in ancient Israel. It is well nigh impossible to sell everything, to give it to the poor and follow Jesus, which is why there are crucifixions and pandemics. The emperor has no clothes. We see and speak. We fall silent and go blind. And yet, and yet, here we all are. From a dead language comes new words. From a grim sight comes a new vision. From a cross comes a resurrection. And so we carry on speaking a new word, seeing a new world, hearing a renewed love, and finding a reformed and refined faith. Thanks be to God for resurrections, for faith, and for new languages. Amen. Let's sing three verses of the hymn of the day, Take My Life That I May Be. Three verses. Emily, if you would, please. Thank you, Emily. 
I invite you to stand as you are able and let us confess our faith using the old Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you would... Uh, for me to pray for you in the liturgy of healing. I invite you to remain standing, and the rest of you may be seated. And we'll start over here. Emily, Jesus Christ, be. Sign of the cross is a symbol of healing and. Amen. Chieko, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Surely, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary Lou, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Joe, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of healing and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen. Dale, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. Amen. June, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of healing and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen. Becky, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of healing and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping online, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. And receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the concluding prayer and then the prayers of intercession. A pule, kako, let us pray. Living God through the laying on of hands and anointing. Grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here with the prayers of intercession. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Uniting God, you call forth different gifts in those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. E ka haku. Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land 
and bless all who toil in the fields, gardens, and orchards. Provide for good working conditions and keep them safe. Eka haku. Aloha, kiakua. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Eka haku. Aloha, keakua. Sheltering God, in Jesus, you traveled among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind, especially the Institute of Human Services and Achieve Zero. Eka haku. Aloha, keakua. Healing God, remember the sick, especially all those whom we name in our hearts and those whom we speak aloud. Jim, Judy, Sherry, Jennifer, Charlene, Cliff, Dick, David, Gary, Janet, Jessica, Carrie, Maggie, Mary, Melissa, Michael, Patty, Roger, the family of Sally Mayer, Steph, Uncle Keith, Vicky, Eugene, Jung Yol. Restore them, O oh God. Eka Haku. Aloha, Keakua. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding in this congregation. Eka Haku. Aloha, Keakua. Remember those this week with birth birthdays, especially Matt, those who are remembering their baptisms, especially Dale. May their days be full of laughter, life, and joy. E ka haku. Aloha, keakua. We remember the communion of saints in Kailua, known as St. John Lutheran Church, and their pastor, Catherine Zerker. May they be faithful witnesses to the God who gives us new visions and new language. E ka haku. Aloha, keakua. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died, especially those who gave their lives ministering to those afflicted by COVID-19. Make us confident in your promise of salvation and support us in our own journey of faith. Eka haku. Aloha, keakua. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Aloha nui eoko, okay aloha, e mau anamea, haoloa. Friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. And you know whom you can hug and whom you can wave. And for those of you online, still piecing it out here. So it's great. Okay, you may be seated. I just want to say, as I prepare the table, thank you for your ongoing support of your time and your talent and your tithes. Uh, people are really connecting and having that things. And uh, I'm grateful to God for that. I'm grateful to God to see all of you here today, all of you online. That too is the work of, the, of faith. As I prepare, continue to prepare the table, Emily, would you please lead us in the offering song, Creating Me a Clean Heart?
Epuli Kako. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Heart. To the Lord our Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our head and gave thanks. People saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray in the new language as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Nama away. Bev, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Joe, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Sally, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Bill. The body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. June, the body of Christ is broken for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you. Nelson, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Deanne. The body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Kathy, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Andrea, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Zella. Christ died for you, and he keeps you safe in his arms now and always. Amen. Ritter, Christ died for you, and he keeps you safe in his arms now and always. Amen. Becky, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Andrew, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Henry, the body of Christ is broken for you, 
and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Hagen, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Sheila, the body of Christ is broken for you. Or Shirley, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Dale, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Chieko, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. And finally, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online at this time, if you have bread and wine with you or something reasonably close, or if you have nothing, in the words of Martin Luther, you can still commune with Christ and with us by receiving these words in faith. The body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Epuliakako, let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I was going to start the announcements as I was covering things up, but I realized my microphone, so that wasn't going to work. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, uh, it, uh, we put a little reminder and encouragement in there for everybody to make sure uh, that uh, their uh, uh, tests are up to, up to date. Uh, also, uh, uh, to Afghan refugees and uh, refugees on the southern border uh, through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service. And if you would like to know more about what they're up or support them, uh, you can uh, Google them and or ask uh, Carolyn, uh, email her and ask her and she'll send you a link. Also, Lutheran disaster response is continuing. ET parts of southern Services. Uh, thank you, Chief. Thing of all the cookies, uh, they, they were magnificent, and they're looking forward for uh, the next one in December, right? December. 4th. Okay, stay tuned. Also, uh, a number of people are retiring in the church count. Out about a year ago, uh, but because of the still kind of locked locked in but we're still but we're going to need a president a vice president and a and then you can also be at large members as well Uh, give me a call or give Linda Santos uh, our, or Bo, who I think is on. And they'll be glad to you about what's going on. I think that's it.
Any other announcements? Okay, please stand then for the blessing dismissal. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord with grace and mercy. May the Lord favor and grant peace. Amen. Let's sing four verses of this. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.